So we'll call the, we'll call the order of the February meeting and the Binghamton Traffic Board. It's February 10th, 2022. Uh, the first item of business is approval of the minutes from the January 13th, 2022 meeting. Uh, is there a motion? Motion. A second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Wayne, it doesn't look like anyone, we have anyone joining us on, on the line today, right? Okay. So we can move on then to the next portion of the agenda, which is the traffic board determination. Um, the first item on the list is the North Street walking uh, tour street review. Um, the traffic board had a presentation on this last month um, by DMTS. Um, DMTS conducted a road safety assessment for North Street um, last fall. This is partly in response to safety concerns expressed by uh, residents of that neighborhood. So based on that assessment, the traffic division um, is recommending amendments and updates to the traffic code, um, which should be outlined in the IDC. Do we all have a copy of that? Do you have a copy of that one? I'm looking right okay. now. I got the unwarranted traffic signal. I do not think I have the North Street. Okay. I can get mine here. Okay, so um, in the IDC, um, like I said, traffic division is recommending um, amendments and updates to the code based on that road safety assessment. Dan, do you want to just give us a, a quick overview of, of uh, what, you, what we have here? Yeah. We cannot hear him. Sorry about that. Thank you. Okay. What we did is uh, we took the BMPS study and we went down and just uh, evaluated it and based on the different uh, requests made, uh, we broke it down to three sections. We first section, we broke it down to traffic code updates. And uh, there, what we did is we deleted a couple of sections, the 15 minute parking uh, uh, on Oak Street uh, and the two hour parking between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. on North Street, South Side. Uh, we inserted a uh, no parking anytime on uh, North Street from Wallace Street to 48 feet west as requested. And uh, we also inserted on Oak Street, uh, the no parking zone from Main Street to North Street, uh, which is posted, but was not in the traffic code book. Uh, we amended a couple of things on Front Street uh, uh, from uh, North Street to 42 feet south to read to 100 feet south for no parking. And then uh, on uh, North Street South Side, uh, there's a couple of overlapping things that we amended so that uh, uh, it would accommodate to the uh, on street uh, parking as, as should be and as posted on the street already. So with that, uh, that, would just, that would should probably be approved first uh, as a separate item because it's going to be uh, affecting the traffic code book. So it should probably the traffic code stuff do that right now okay so um what else first of all does anyone have any questions or comments if not i'll look for a motion to accept the the traffic code updates portion of of the recommendations here for the motion make a motion we accept as written second second all those in favor aye, aye. any any opposed 
Okay, go ahead, Dan. Okay, uh, the second part of it is uh, had to do with the uh, uh, highlighted things that uh, were recommended that be done because of they were traffic safety uh, concern type of thing. Uh, they included uh, uh, regulatory signs being reviewed and uh, uh, reposted as where they're missing, uh, if they were faded or uh, if they uh, were bent over and stuff like that. Um, then also, uh, uh, ladder crosswalks, uh, West recommended uh, they be inserted uh, on the street at all four intersections of all, all the streets uh, at Oak, Murray, and Chapin Street with North Street. And then at the two ending streets there, uh, at Edward Street and at uh, Front Street, that the uh, uh, a crosswalk be inserted there. And in conjunction with that, we also uh, recommend that the, uh, the ADA approved uh, access to those crosswalks be approved. Uh, stop signs, again, if they have to be posted seven feet in height from the base of the, of the sign down to the roadway. Um, at the intersection of Oak and North Street that the uh, Stop signs there have all-way placards placed underneath the signs. Uh, right now they have four-way posted under them and that's uh, in violation. It's supposed to say all-way underneath. Uh, an oversign, oversized stop sign of 36 by 36 be posted on Chapin Street southbound. Uh, that's due to the number of right-hand turn accidents at that location. It doesn't qualify to be a four-way stop intersection or, or all-way stop intersection, but uh, because of the number of accidents that were occurring there, uh, that the, the largest stop sign be put there. Um, pedestrian advanced crosswalk sign warning signs should be posted on Front Street, alerting motors northbound and southbound that there is uh, crosswalk in advance of these. Uh, coming up to traffic, uh, observer of people crossing the street. Okay. And pretty much uh, that's it. It's uh, stuff that should be done as soon as possible, but uh, uh, it uh, may take a little bit of time to get it done because like the ADA stuff, it's just not a, you know, a, a overnight thing. It has to be a, uh, engineer and stuff like that be, uh, be, be approved. Okay. So um, does anyone have any questions or comments? Um, I just want to reach out and say we reached out to the DPW shortly thereafter and they did put some uh, crosswalk markings yeah, we everywhere in that area that had the crosswalks there. Yeah, we did notice that there there were in the, uh, some of the locations, uh, and uh, we appreciate that. That was good. That did help out. The final thing uh, we broke down to is some miscellaneous items, um, and here it's uh, items that uh, uh, are of concern, but uh, they uh, not traffic code items, and they're not. Uh, uh, items they have to go through, like an engineer's office and stuff. For example, uh, the street name sign at the corner of North and Murray Street, uh, because of foliage at that intersection, should be moved to from the southeast corner to the northwest corner. Uh, the obsolete uh, traffic signal box at North and Front Street uh, should re be removed. Uh, it's just an obstruction there. Uh, at the Bridgewater Nursing Home, the loading dock uh, curb cut, it's, it's oversized. It should be uh, re, uh, realigned to uh, make it to comply with the, the city engineer's uh, uh, driveway cut size. Um, and number three, North Street, uh, repair the sidewalk. Uh, there's a heave 
um, sidewalk there from a tree, uh, tree roots growing up underneath it. But it's basically more housekeeping stuff than anything. I can go through the list here, but it's basically what's posted in the, the IDC here. Does anyone have questions or comments? Okay, um, what I do then, what I'll do, I think then is uh, we can look for a motion to accept the recommendations of the traffic division as outlined in the IDC and is summarized just now by Mr. Carell. Uh, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Is there a second? Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And oh, but if we could just make sure that this IDC is forwarded to like the, the relevant departments, so engineering, DPW, um, planning to probably have a copy. That'd be great. Thank you. Okay, the next item on the agenda uh, street plan review for uh, State Street as part of the Deco District. Um, this was on our agenda last time. Uh, it's my understanding that no action is needed from the traffic board at this time, but we'll continue to keep it as an agenda item um, as this project gets underway. Um, and construction, I, I think, is, is set to set, start on this portion of the Deco District in the spring. Um, so unless anyone objects, we'll just hold, hold this on the agenda and revisit it next time. Okay. Um, after that, it's... Um, a review of replacing and upgrading missing prohibited parking signs. Um, Dan, you gave us this overview last time. This was on the agenda last time too. And if I recall, this is just about cleaning up the traffic code. Yeah, basically that's what it is. Um, the, uh, the signage on the street uh, doesn't reflect what's in the traffic code book and the traffic code book doesn't reflect what's on the street. Uh, and so basically what we did is uh, we went through housekeeping and uh, uh, eliminated everything that was in the traffic code book and then just remeasured the street out and uh, presented it here. Uh, so we have a deleted section in the, in the IDC that we're presenting to, to take all the uh, obstructions out. And then we have a, an assertion to uh, bring it back up to date what it should be. And that's what's reflected here in the, in the IDC. Okay, does anyone have questions or comments? Okay, so we would be looking for a motion then to accept the recommendations of the traffic division, uh, which Mr. Carell just summarized and they're outlined uh, in writing in the IDC. Um, do we have a motion? Make a motion we accept the uh, writing that Mr. Carell has presented. Is there a second? Second. Councilman Resonetti, did you second that? Uh, yes, I did. Okay, thank you. So all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. All right. Um, the next item on the agenda is a traffic light review at the intersection of Robinson Street and Mason Avenue. Um, this is one of the traffic lights BMTS recommended for removal in its 2016 traffic signal report. Um, BMTS determined the intersection did not meet signal warrants and is recommending instead a two-way stop sign on Mason Avenue. Um, did, did I get that correct, Sydney? Yes. Okay. Um, so an important part of this, I think, is the community outreach and input aspect. I've let Councilman Scanlon, uh, as this is in his district, know about this recommendation. Um, so he has a chance to hear from constituents on this, and I think having just told him that this week, I'd like to, to revisit this at the next meeting after we hear from Councilman Scanlon. Is, is that okay with everyone? Yep. yep. Okay. So we will keep that on for, for next time then. Um, next is a review of the on-street parking near 85 West End Avenue. This was at the request of Sergeant Nakalong at the West End Armory. Um, Dan, could you give us the report on this? Yeah, what uh, we had is we had a request uh, from the Western Armory to uh, move a no parking uh, sign from its uh, location right now. Uh, it's on the north side of the uh, parking area of 
the Western Army on the south end of their property. Um, I'm looking for the measurement here. Uh, don't have my glasses on. Maybe I should put them on. Um, presently, it's a uh, Did I write it down? Maybe I didn't write it down. But hang on a second, I know where it is. Okay, right now it's 485 feet. Uh, I'm sorry, 369 feet south of Army Lane. And they would like to have it moved more south, uh, more north of that location. Uh, what happened is uh, one of their soldiers uh, at a drill was leaving the, uh, the armory as he was leaving from the parking lot. He didn't observe uh, a vehicle coming up the street because of line of sight issue. And so they were requesting that we uh, put additional no park or move the, the no parking zone further north than what it is right now. And uh, in doing so, they would be losing parking in front of that location. The traffic division uh, reviewed the uh, accidents at that location for the last three years that's required. And uh, we found there was only one accident, that accident at that location. So it didn't meet the guidelines for, uh, you know, increasing the, the uh, no parking zone. Although because it's a private driveway type intersection, it really didn't have to. Um, and uh, the other thing is, is that uh, in meeting with the, the Sergeant uh, Nakalong, uh, reviewing the parking area, uh, the parking area has two driveways coming out of it. It's an 80 foot wide driveway uh, and the traffic pattern right now is that you, you, cars can use either driveway to go in and out. And what we're suggesting to them is that instead of using the, the driveway for in and out on both of them, to make it like a circular flow and have the northmost uh, driveway where the accident occurred and end only and have the uh, southmost uh, uh, driveway and exit only. That would have provide them a more uh, sizable uh, line of sight coming out of the driveway. Uh, they would have to post in, sign, any signage that uh, they wanted to uh, have on that property because it is their property. Uh, and the parking space is uh, what a diagonal now would have to be changed to the opposite diagonal part. Sergeant uh, Nakalong uh, said that what he would have to do is he'd have to contact his uh, supervising officer who uh, ordered him to follow up on this and they would get back to us. At this time, they have not gotten back to us. So we're just gonna make a suggestion that they we put this on hold and so we see if they can uh, get back to us and let us know what they're looking for. Sure, I think that makes sense. Um, does anyone have any questions or, or comments for Mr. Corral? What about what armory lane ran east and west? Doesn't that run along the side of the armory? West End Avenue. All the West End Avenue lane. Oh, that's where you're turning out. Okay. Did I say so it wasn't armory lane. Did I say armory lane? Yeah. I'm sorry, my mistake. That's okay, that's where I was confused. Because I'm thinking you pull out of that thing, that street is very narrow. Yeah, yeah, no, this, this is this is what's in there. So, sorry about that. No problem. That's clarified quickly. Okay. Okay, so I think we'll give the sergeant a chance to get back to us and we can hold this uh, and revisit it at the next meeting. That works for everyone. So, and we can move on to the last item on our agenda. Uh, a review of on-street parking on Ardsley Road, which came uh, to the traffic board at the request of Councilman Scanlon. Uh, Dan, do you want to just give us a, an overview of uh, traffic division findings on this? Yeah, the traffic division received a request from the councilman to make the street one side of street parking only. It's a narrow street, about 22 and a half feet wide. And uh, the problem is that when two cars park across from each other, it makes it very difficult to pass between those two cars. Um, we had the same situation on Cleveland Ave where the neighborhood uh, requested that the uh, uh, the parking be one side of the street parking only. 
the council person had a neighborhood meeting over there uh, and they came up with the uh, support that, uh, that it be done. The traffic division at that time recommended that if we do it over there, that we choose the east side of the street as the no parking side because the fire hydrants are on the east side of the street and access to the fire hydrant for the fire department would be more, uh, more available and more of a safety type issue, I guess. And so what we uh, suggested to Councilman Scanlon is that, that uh, we do the same thing there is that he have a, a neighborhood type meeting to make the neighborhood aware that, uh, that he's uh, proposing this, that the, uh, the park can be put on one side of the street or the other side of the street uh, due to the narrowness of the street in case an emergency vehicle had to get up there. And uh, in doing so that uh, the traffic division would recommend it again, because the fire hydrants are on the north side of the street, that uh, we post the north side of the street as a no parking zone. Uh, however, at this time, we haven't heard back from the councilman, so we don't know if he has a meeting, if he's going to have the meeting. Um, but uh, uh, if, uh, if they want to make that a no parking up there, I think the, uh, the recommendation being made by the councilman should be supported by the neighborhood and the councilman should come ahead and uh, make the request, request that way instead of just uh, having the track revision up there and review it and uh, making it our decision that, that it be done. I did speak to Councilman Scanlon. Um, he received a copy of the IDC with the, the traffic division's recommendations, which included um, advising residents in that area and getting their input. So it's my understanding he plans to do that. Um, I believe that the, this request for traffic division review, uh, traffic board review came because he was hearing from, from residents. So now we'll take this back to them. Um, let them know that uh, the traffic division is recommending uh, no parking on the north side of the street. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. Um, so given that, I just had that conversation with Councilman Scanlon this week. So given that, um, if we could hold this over until next time, we have a chance to hear from, from Councilman Scanlon again. Does that work for everyone? Nope. Okay, I believe that was the last item on our agenda. Um, did anyone have questions, comments, other items of discussion? Well, one new, one item of discussion: the flasher on the on the uh, intersection of Murray and North. Do we want that removed now? We have made that recommendation, and um, it got talked about at the last meeting. I think at the last meeting, the consensus was that it could be removed. Could or couldn't? Could. Could be. Without any. Um, studies or anything because it's already posted with the stop signs. All right. So it wouldn't go through the normal signal removal process. So I think that that was the case. I didn't know if anybody was going to check with Angela Riley to make sure she was in agreement with that. I was going to forward a copy of um, the IDC to the councilwoman uh, after today's meeting. So I'll make her aware of the recommendations that that were so in I guess here. I would hold maybe recommend to hold off until you hear back from her back on from that specific one, the blinking light. Okay. You got it. I will talk to the councilwoman this week. Okay, anything else? All right, then I will take a motion to adjourn. No second. Uh, did we have, I think we need, we need a motion first. Can anyone motion? <laughs> Make a motion, we adjourn. Does anyone second? Second. Thank you. All right. Uh, motion is adjourned and we will see everyone next month. Thank you. Thank you.